Hello everyone, welcome back to Nunley Math. I'm Aaron Nunley. I'm going to be talking with you today about adding and subtracting rational numbers. Now this is actually the second part of our video series on um, adding and subtracting rational numbers. The first video, which we just finished recording a few minutes ago, is on how to add and subtract rational numbers that have like denominators. If you have not watched that video already, I would recommend going back and watching that before you view this lesson. Um, there's, there's a lot of things we introduce there that we're going to be talking about very quickly here and it certainly is going to be helpful for you. Again, as I mentioned in that lesson, I want to point out that um, this lesson is designed for middle school students who already have some experience with adding and subtracting fractions, but we're going to try and extend that to include positive and negative fractions. We'll review some basic fraction ideas, but certainly fraction ideas take weeks and weeks and weeks to develop and that is not the intention of this video. This is more of a refresher and an introduction to, to how we can apply these to new situations. So, we got a lot of ground to cover. Let's go ahead and see if we can get started. When we talk about adding and subtracting with different denominators, we're talking about a problem that looks like this. Notice you have the fraction 3 fifths and it's combined with the fraction 2 thirds. The 3 fifths says we have an object cut into five equal size pieces. So, I take an object, I cut it into five equal size pieces, and I have three of them. Three out of the five are shaded yellow. In the previous video, we said, well, if I had two fifths, then I would just shade the other two. But notice, this is not cut into fifths. These pieces are a different size. Let me show you what I mean over here on the right. I have an object, instead of being cut into five equal size pieces, I've cut it into three, and I'm taking two-thirds of them or two of the three. When we had like denominators and all our pieces were the same, all we had to do was say, well, I have three pieces and two pieces, that's five pieces. But I can't do that if the pieces are different sizes. I need to change these pieces so that the pieces are the same size. And I've got a really quick and cool, easy way to do that. Notice this vertical bar here and this vertical bar. It took two vertical lines to cut this into three pieces. So I'm going to take those two vertical lines and I'm going to move them over here to this object. See that? Let me show you again. I've got two vertical lines here. I've copied those over to here. Notice that this blue column and this yellow and white column are the same size. This is one, two, three columns that match these three columns. I'm then going to take these four horizontal lines that created my one, two, three, four, five rows, and I'm going to transfer those over here to the right. One, two, three, four horizontal rows. Notice that I have one row, two row, three row, four rows, and four five rows. These five rows are the same size as these five rows. Now, when you look at your first object and you look at your second object, do you notice something about the size of the pieces? All the pieces are now the same size. By taking my fifths and dividing them into three sections, and taking my thirds and dividing them into five sections, I've created an object where all the pieces are the same size. These three out of five rows turned into three, six, nine out of 15 small rectangles. Three of five rows is the same as 9 of 15 pieces. 2 of my 3 columns is the same as 10 out of 15 pieces. Well, now my pieces are the same size, so I can combine them. 9 fifteenths added to 10 fifteenths is 19 fifteenths. Remember, we add the numerators keep the denominators, and then I'm going to show you how this looks. Notice I can take one of these pieces, one of the yellows, and move it over to the other side. 
two of the yellows, three of the yellows. I'm just moving those yellows and fitting them into the empty spaces. Notice that with the 10 pieces that were blue and five of the yellows, I now have 15 fifteenths or one whole. There's 16, 17, 18. There's my 19 pieces out of 15 needed to make a hole. In other words, I have enough for a hole, but then I have one, two, three, four pieces left over. That's your mixed number. 19 fifteenths is the same as one hole and four fifteenth size pieces left over. Now, this is a really long and complicated process that involves taking different size pieces and turning them into same size pieces. But I can make this a lot simpler by doing it mathematically instead of pictures. The picture example is just to show you the basic idea. Different size pieces have to be turned into same size pieces so that we can combine them. We need same size pieces, which means we need the denominators to be the same. Notice I have negative 2 sevenths is being added to negative 3 fifths. These pieces are different sizes, but I can make them the same size. All I need to do is take these seven pieces and cut them each into five more pieces. 2 out of 7 is going to be cut into 5 smaller pieces. Notice that I'm also going to take these 5 pieces and cut them into 7 smaller pieces. Notice how that looks. My 2 sevenths is going to be multiplied by 5 fifths. That's going to change this denominator into a 35. My negative 3 fifths is going to get multiplied by 7 sevenths, which would also make this denominator into 35. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. 7 times 5 is 35. Negative 3 times 7 is negative 21. 5 times 7 is 35. This problem at the top, negative 2 sevenths plus negative 3 fifths, if I cut these into even size pieces, this is going to be negative 10 30 fifths. This is going to be negative 21 30 fifths. Now I can use my rule for common denominators. Negative 10 plus negative 21 makes negative 31 30 fifths. Once the pieces are the same size, all I have to do is add the numerators. Now, some people get concerned about where these numbers come from. All I've done is used the opposite denominator and turned it into a fraction over itself. The reason I can do that is 7 sevenths is a 1, and I'm allowed to multiply by 1 anytime I want without changing my solution. Remember, that is the identity property of multiplication. Same thing over here. Why am I just allowed to multiply by a 5 fifths anytime I want to? Because 5 fifths is the same as a 1. I can multiply by 1 anytime I want to. Does that make sense? The process is a little complicated, but hopefully that's, that's going to make a little bit more sense as we work our way through. Consider this. I have negative 8 elevenths plus 5 six. These are different size pieces different size pieces, I need them to be same size pieces. So I need to split these into smaller pieces. The easiest way to do that is to take your negative 8 elevenths and multiply it by this 6 over itself. Remember, that's just a 1. It changes the way the fraction looks without changing its value. I can take this 5 6 and multiply by the opposite denominator, the 11 elevenths. Again, I'm multiplying by a 1. Because if I do that, this becomes negative 48 over 66. This becomes 55 over 66. Now all I have to do is add the numerators. Not too bad, right? Um, 
This idea of opposite denominators will always give us a common denominator. It's not necessarily the least common denominator. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes, but just know that this will work every single time. Sometimes it might give you some pretty nasty numbers, but certainly it is going to give you the right solution if you power through that. I'd recommend you pause the video, you try this one on your own for a second. Um, remember, I don't like my students to subtract, so please rewrite this as the addition problem. Addition is always um, it's changing subtraction to addition. Subtraction means the same as adding the opposite. See if you can get common denominators and add these together. I'm going to assume you've already paused the video and finished. Here's what that looks like. I take the 15 and I bring it over here over itself. I take the 13 and I put it over here over itself. When I multiply these together, this is 60 pieces that are each 165th of the whole. This is negative 143, which is 165th of the whole. Add your numerators, you get negative 83 over 165. So that's some pretty unfriendly numbers there, isn't it? But it is the correct solution. The less friendly these denominators are, the less friendly this one's going to be as well. I want to show you something else. Here again, I've got a subtraction problem. I don't let my students do subtraction. I would make them change this into adding the opposite, so it becomes plus positive. When I look at these two numbers, I could take this first fraction, and I could multiply it by this 6, 6 over 6. And I could take this 9, and I could multiply by 9 ninths. If I do that, both my denominators are going to be 54, and that would work. However, there is a little bit easier way to do that. 54 is a common denominator, but it is not the smallest or least common denominator that I could come up with. Let me back this up for just a second. I'm going to erase that. I need pieces that can be made from a 9 and a 6, or I need pieces that can be divided by 9 and be divided by 6. Can you think of a number that can be divided by both 9 and by 6 and come out evenly? Or can you think of a multiple of 6, 6, 12, 18, 24, that is also a multiple of 9? 9, 18, 27, 36? Notice that 18 is a common multiple of both of these. That means I don't need to turn these denominators into 54. All I need to do is turn them into an 18. How do you turn a 9 into an 18? Well, you can multiply by 2 over 2. How do you turn a 6 into an 18? you could multiply by 3 over 3. Notice that's what I've written here. I didn't need to use 6 over 6, even though I could, because the, if I had multiplied by nine, the 9 by 6 and the 6 by 9, I would have gotten a 54, which is a very large number. If I do these, I get smaller numbers. I get 18ths instead of 54ths. It's much easier for me to add, involves less simplification at the end. Now that my denominators are the same, I just add my numerators, negative 8 plus 15. Let's do another one. Let's make it a little more complicated. These are mixed numbers. Notice again it is subtraction. I don't let my students do subtraction. Instead, we're going to rewrite this as adding the opposite. Minus is plus negative. And then I'm going to take these mixed numbers and turn them into improper fractions. Improper fractions. Again, the goal here is not to talk about improper fractions, so I'm going to do this pretty quickly. 5 times 8 is 40, plus the 3. This is negative 43 eighths. 
12 times 4 is 48 plus 5 is 53. This is negative 53 twelfths. Again, I did that quickly. If you need help in converting mixed numbers back into improper fractions, that's really a lesson for a different day. You can probably look that up on YouTube as well. Notice this is 8, this is 12. I could multiply by 12 over 12 and 8 over 8, but that's going to give me a pretty big nasty number. I really don't want to do that unless I absolutely have to. So let me go back and erase all of this. Can you think of a number that can be divided by both 8 and by 12? Or another way to say that is if you were to think about the multiples of 8, 8, 16, 24, and so on, and you were to think of the multiples of 12, 12, 24, 36. Notice both of those have a 24, or 24 is a multiple of both the 12 and the 8. So instead of turning this into some horribly large number, I'm going to change it into 24. What do I need to multiply by to turn my 8 into a 24? Well, that's a 3. How do I turn a 12 into a 24? That's a 2. If I were to multiply those out, I would get negative 129 over 24 and negative 106 over 24. The denominators are the same, so I just add the numerators. Notice this is an improper fraction, so I'm going to try and turn that into a mixed number by taking 24 into 235. It goes in 9 times with 19 left over. Very quickly, let me just comment about the negative signs. Notice that I'm just leaving the negative sign always in the front, always in the front of the entire problem. Some students get confused because they end up putting like the 9 in front and leave the negative on the 19. Remember, this negative applies to the entire amount, not just to certain portions of it. I've got time for one more. This one's got some larger, weirder denominators. Notice you've got a 28 and a 35. Sometimes it's difficult to find what the least common denominator or least common multiples of the denominator are. Um, notice with 8 and 12, we were able to just list the multiples and hit it pretty quickly. Same thing with 6 and 19. That is not going to happen quickly and easily with the 28 and the 35. Um, you could just go through and multiply the first fraction by 35 over 35 and the second by 28 and 28, but that's going to give you some really large nasty numbers. Let me show you a quick trick for finding the least common multiple of these denominators or the least common denominator. If I were to take the number 28 and I were to make a factor tree from it or break it down into its prime factors, Notice I went ahead and turned this to addition. The factorization for 28 is a 2, a 2, and a 7. If I were to break this down as far as it would go, 2 times 2 is 4 times 7 makes 28. And I were to do the same thing for 35. I were to break it down to 5 times 7. Notice they both have a 7 in common already. But the 35 has a 5 that the 28 doesn't. And the 28 has a 4 that the 35 doesn't. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that leftover or extra 5 that the 35 has, and I'm going to give it to the 28. I'm going to take the leftover 4 that the 28 had, and I'm going to give it to the 35. When I do that, notice what happens. I get 45 one fortieths and negative 12 1 40th, which is 33 1 40th. That is already in simplest form. Here again, I know we've done this relatively quickly, but I'm operating under the assumption that people have already worked with fractions before. If you've never worked with fractions before, this probably isn't the best place to start because you've got several things involved here um, that, that are, make it fairly complicated. The fact that you've got to deal with minus signs and that you've got negative numerators, that really makes this much more difficult. You're going to want to go back and watch something involving simple fractions. But if you have some experience, hopefully this has been a nice transition for you to remind you of some of the fraction rules you might have forgotten, as well as to integrate that into fractions involving positive and negative signs.
That's all we have for you today. Make sure you tune back in. We're going to talk about multiplying and dividing fractions next. It's a very interesting lesson, very, some very cool illustrations um, in there. Hopefully this has been helpful to you. As always, make sure you leave us a comment in the comment section. Make sure you turn on your notifications so you can keep up with all we're doing. And of course, please like and subscribe um, so that we uh, we can keep track of how many people are, are, are gaining some value from what we're doing here today. Certainly, if you're, if you're learning stuff, let us know. If, uh, this, if you've seen some things that are problematic and you want to help us out, certainly leave us a comment about that as well so we can improve these for our students in the future. You guys take care of yourself. I've enjoyed our time together. Be well. Bye-bye.